Yeah, girl, wash your face. Thank you. Um, that's going to be on Tuesdays from 7 to 8. And then there's also the um, Sunrise group from 8 to 9 on Sunday morning. So sign up, get in a group. You need to be in a group because that is where you find freedom is in their group. So get in a group, build relationships, become vulnerable, and, and just love each other. That's, that's what's going to bring freedom in your life. And uh, so that's, uh, and now I want to, oh, we have step three of the growth track today. It's on leadership. Um, at 12 noon, back in the fireside room, um, this is developing your leadership. This is um, where you will learn about integrity and uh, character. Um, we go over all that on how to benefit you, not only at church, but in your everyday life, in your work, um, school, uh, your neighborhood. Yeah. It all works together. So I want to invite Kristen up, and she's got a couple of uh, news-worthy events. Thank you. Okay, so Miss Cindy talked about getting plugged in with small groups because that's where you get to find freedom. Yes. Yes. Well, I want to talk to you about a few ways that you can make a difference. Oh. So we have a couple of events coming up, and I told you about it last week. We really want to promote these two events on the same date. So September 15th, which is Saturday. Uh, and the first one is a ministry that we already support all the time. This is a big annual fundraiser right here in Oregon City. Hope 360 Ooh. is doing their walk. And, we, and remember, there's a lot of ways that you can be a part of it, not just the two-mile walk in unity together that we're going to do. So there's the walk, right? Uh, and if you get sponsors and if you fundraise $50, you get one of their sweet t-shirts. So there's the walk. And then they're also doing a silent auction. So if you want to be a part of bringing a basket, making a basket, something that we can auction off during the walk, please talk to me. And that's a great way to be connected and involved. So there's the basket, which you can also bid on and hopefully take one home. Uh, and then the third way is a, a teen essay writing contest with prize money. So that's a great way for our teens to be connected as well. So three ways that you can help with that 360 walk. Um, the other major event on that same day is our Northwest Bible Train graduation uh, ceremony. So it's a dinner, and that's in the evening on that same Saturday. And we support them all the time. It's the first Sunday of every month. We like to bless them. They're coming in. They're so close to us now that they're moving into Oregon City or Beaver Creek. Beaver Creek, so close. Um, and so this is a way for us to say, great job, right? So it's a dinner, uh, and our church already has a table. So if you're interested in going, please come talk to me. Um, otherwise, we're going to start selling those tickets because wouldn't it be great to take more than one table? To, as a church, go have dinner and support yes. what they're doing. So please talk to me if you have any questions about either of those two events that coming Saturday. We're about a month away. All right. And now let's uh, go ahead and introduce our pastor who's a great message for us. All right. I'm ready today. Thank you guys for being with us today. I'm looking forward to just spending another time talking about uh, prayer. We've been on this for about, uh, what, it's our third week, I believe, talking about prayer. We're in our 21 days of prayer. Have you felt yourself maybe just elevate your prayer just a little? Yeah, I'm going for now. Sorry. That's just stress as a sound person. But I'm calm. I'm totally calm. <laughs> uh, but has anybody felt a sense that, you know, we purpose from, from August 5 to 25 that we're going to elevate our prayer level? Does anybody feel like they've grown maybe just one step in the prayer? Yeah. Susie yeah. has. All right. Good, good, you guys. All right. That, and so it's really cool to see that. It's focused. Remember, we had the guides out there for every day that you could follow along with. So we're in unity there. Uh, we have the prayer booklets for everybody that say, across the top pray first i want to encourage you all to be sure and um, make sure you have at least one extra all right these are for you to use and uh you can also use these to give to people and to share with people you all bought them and so they're there and so please be sure and use them i think you'll find once you get through prayer you'll do like i do when you start working through them each and every day there's different areas you can pray on so please take advantage of that amen does that sound good <laughs> all right, all right. Go ahead and pull your notes out. We're going to cover some things today. We're going to talk about one of the specific areas. I have mine clipped in here in the prayer book. I'm going to kind of walk us through it. And so as we go through this and, and, and minister on this, I hope this will bring some life to you on prayer. And so let me get my notes out here and get ready. So here we go. We'll start with our theme scripture, which has been the same. I wonder if... Uh, 
Is it still doing it? A little bit. I wonder if we can change the batteries. Would that do it? No. No? No. All right, here we go. Uh, it's not a deep scripture. Go ahead. It's up behind me here. It says this, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has what? Great power on it, right? The earnest prayer, when you when you when you are effectively, earnestly praying, there says the, the Holy Spirit is teaching us there's great power in that. And it produces something. It produces wonderful results. Amen. So every prayer you do, especially when it's done earnestly, there's something behind it. We want us to pray with passion and authority. The reason I have books like this published, they're just biblical examples of prayer, is so that you can be confident that you are working through these prayers authoritatively as the Word of God outlines it. Amen? Amen. So we're talking about a specific one, and if you're in, you have your books with you, it's on page 38, and it's called The Prayer of Jabez. You may have recalled, those of you that have been in the church for a while, I can't remember how many years it was ago, it got, this prayer got pretty popular. It was, uh, there were books written on it, um, and, it, and, it, and it's so interesting when you look at it, when you study it, and we're going to talk about it in just a minute, but it's just a few lines in Scripture. It's just a very, very few lines with Jabez, and, uh, and there, there's so much we can expound upon, upon that. And so, uh, so I think it's very interesting. We're going to turn to the book of First Chronicles, and it's a very interesting part of the Bible, because I don't know how many of you are big Old Testament readers. Um, Pastor Jerry honestly struggles with a lot of the Old Testament. Okay, not because not because uh, it's hard to read. It's just as easy to read as other uh, books of the Bible. But parts of it, like this one, are very. Um, I can switch to a handheld. Would that be easier? So I just switch so I can go in and out because um, it's kind of starting to bother me. And you don't want to be bothered. <laughs> This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. How about this? This is a little better, okay? All right. So we'll stay with this one. We'll stay plugged in, and, and this will work for us, I think, just fine. So, uh, so we're going to talk about the prayer of Jabez. And the interesting thing about the book of First Chronicles is the first nine chapters are nothing but ancestry. So if you're doing daily Bible reading and it's time to read First Chronicles, you kind of, okay, Lord, here we go. And you learn about this person was born of this person, depending on what version it might be. This person begat this person. And it just, go, it just goes on and on and on and on. And it actually goes on for nine full chapters, all right, of all this ancestry and heritage. Remember, our God is a God of order, right? God, he's specific. There's reasons. There's reasons things are put in here in a specific way. And... I find it kind of humorous of the Lord, but it's not. It's just when he wants to make a point, he really makes a point, I think, in, in something like this. Because it's finally in chapter 4. He just talks about this person's born, and this person, and this is family. Then all of a sudden, in chapter 4, we actually kind of take a little bit of a pause, just a short pause. And it's found in 1 Chronicles 4, verses 9 and 10. So read with me verse 9. It says this. It says, all of a sudden, you've been reading about all these people. And then you come upon Jabez. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. Remember, before, there was no more other details on people. This is the, the Lord stops and makes sure this is recorded. All of a sudden, we have detail on this person, all right? So that's a change. More honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. Now, don't switch to the slides yet. Let's just concentrate on that verse for just a second. Jabez means pain. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being labeled? Can you imagine going to school and like you go to school and the teacher says, "What's your name?" My name is Pain. Okay, that that I mean. So obviously, I don't know much about childbirth, but I know childbirth is painful. Obviously, this must have been such a severely painful birth. The mama said, "Hey." You got a new name, son. And it's a pain. I, I mean, it's just, I mean, just walking around with that label. First of all, I just want to say this, those of us that have gone through hardship, because I've had challenges from my childhood and, and adulthood and hardship and things that have held me back. It's like, it's like he does not let that stop him. Again, just, everyone you're being introduced, my name is Pain. My name is Pain. I mean, it just, it, it just, to me, that'd be such a label. It'd be such, it'd be like us today, I think, saying loser. I mean, I think it would be something similar to that. Everyone, he, but you know what? The Bible says that doesn't hold him back. The Bible says that, that actually gives him fuel to like, to like take off and do God's calls and plan in his life. And so, so we'll keep reading here. And, uh, 
and again, he never mentions his past other than it's pain, it was painful, and it jumps right there in verse 10 and says this. He said, he was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. So God is having him called out. Here's Jabez. We're taking a break. Here's Jabez. Here's pain, Mr. Pain and the Patootie, all right? But he's not complaining about the pain he's caused or what he's doing. Instead, what he says is, God of Israel, oh, he says this, that you would bless me. All right? Now, hold, you know, some of us, we hold back because, oh, Lord, why would you want to bless me? Lord, bless me. We're going to talk about that. Why is that so important? Lord, bless me. And then he says this, and expand my territory. Do you know how God has plans for you? Christian talked about making a difference. You need your territory expanded, all right? So the second thing he does, bless me, expand my territory. And then he says this, I know I'm a pain, Lord, but be with me. Be with me in all that I do. Well, something, no, all that I do. All right? And then finally, and keep me from all trouble and pain. And look at that last line. He makes this prayer. And what does God do? He grants his request. Now, the interesting thing is, it's in now all of a sudden the Bible just gets back into all these people. All this lineage of people, you know, that just goes into it. And that's this entire area of, of prayer, the style of prayer is actually based on these two little lines out of First Chronicles. And how he, how again, God made sure it was so important that it's just not a person mentioned, but let's just tell you a little bit about, about my son Jabez and what he did, all right? So we want to learn from that and pattern, pattern from that. God grants his requests. God, Jacob focuses on his promises rather than his, Jacob's issues. He focuses on the promises of God. He doesn't focus on his circumstances. Again, God pauses that genealogy. He says, look at my son Jabez. Hmm. It starts out, let's go back to this one por portion of this verse, 1 Chronicles 4.10. It just starts out there. It says, oh, that you would bless me. Yeah. His first request, his first request is, oh, that you would bless me. And so we look at the style and follow on your books. You can see there, the first thing, that there's four things listed. The first thing is when we're talking to the Lord, we pray for blessing. It's a prayer of blessing. That's your first thing. A prayer of blessing. What's that all about? What's that all about? God, would you bless me? Would you make a deposit in me, is what he's saying. Would, you, would, you, would a portion of heaven come into me so that I could be blessed? I'm not talking about money. I'm not even talking about health. I'm not even talking about, I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm talking in favor of God. I'm just, like, whatever we're doing, Lord, I just, I, I, I can't do this without you. Lord, I, I want you, I need your blessings upon what I'm doing. My mind, everything I think about, everything I do. It affects your finances, it affects your job, it affects all kinds of things. I cannot get over how much God blesses us here at Connection Church. I mean, if I just, if I just take a moment and pause and just, just think about, first of all, just like, to be able to be here at the Pioneer Center. I mean, we have... I know other pastors that have had churches here, and it's been a great experience, but none like ours. God just kind of opened the door for us to like, to like this for now is our home. And, and we have great favor with the building, with the employees here, with people here, and, and everything, everything that happens, we're able to not only bless all of you, but we're able to bless so many ministries. You know, some of you got the link. We have Pastor John in Uganda now uh, leading a team over there. I think seven or eight people, right? Uh, they're over there right now. He posted just a little bit ago. I don't know what the time frame is, but they were doing a worship service with people there. And so to be able to be a part of, of, of work into Africa, we have, we have John Parsons, who's in the Philippines, and uh, you know, Stephanie. And Stephanie's actually with them in Uganda right now. But we got John, who's, who's he's giving us updates of the work he's doing. To be able to be a part of the world, to be a part of the city, you know, to be able to be a part of Hope 360, the Northwest Bible Training Center, lives that are a part, all because of the generosity of the people of our body that just want to, we all want to make a difference. We just want to, we just want the Lord's blessings, not just be for us, but to flow through us, all right? Yeah. And then, of course, there's my personal life with my, with my Cindy, my wife, and with, with the kids and the grandkids. And I mean, it's just like, sometimes you just like, you just, you just sit back and you just look and you're just like, oh, Lord, you've blessed me so and I think you could probably all say the same thing. And it's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, Psalms 1835 says this. It says, you have given me your shield of victory. Yeah. 
Your right hand supports me. Your help has made me great. See, I can tell you, I'm nothing without God. I can tell you, you're nothing without God. I mean, it's just like, without God, I mean, it's just, it's his shield. It's his right hand of support. It's what his, it's him going before us. It's him making our path straight. It's like, and I think Jay does realize this. He started out with a real, um, what's the right word? He started with a real issue being a pain. I mean, he, he could have been labeled, and he probably was. He could have been teased, he probably was. But he's, he just said, you know, Lord, I don't know what, that's not going to hold me back, Lord. Just, you're going to use me. You, 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 I'm wonderfully made, Lord. And so use me to be a blessing. Bless me and bless others. It's all about you. Well, I know that, uh, that uh, some of you know, probably all of you know, that I was raised on a farm. I was, I was just a farm boy. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't. I grew up very humbly. I, you know, I, you just didn't, there wasn't much there. I mean, we, we were well provided for, but it's like I was afraid to talk to people. I didn't, I didn't have any friends. I had some friends, but my school was like, everything was on foot then. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but it, it was a long ways away. And we didn't have a car to get around. I mean, the kids that lived in the city, they all got to know each other. I, I didn't get that. I, didn't, I, was, I was real comfortable and uncomfortable in uh, public situations. And you guys, I've told you that story. I mean, the, the only B I got, I was I, I excelled in school, but the, the only class that I got a lower grade in was speech because I just would panic the thought of doing this. And now today, this is my most comfortable spot. I mean, we're helping out right now doing a short season of worship, but that's very uncomfortable to me because I worship, I'm sitting here, I used to worship being alone at home and turning that stuff on, but when I come up to preach, all of a sudden I'm relaxed now. It's like, oh, this is so easy. Now I get, now I get to flow in what, what, what God's doing in me. And so, so that's really exciting to me. But, but again, if you, if you really knew, and sometimes that'll work on a man's mind, it's like, oh, if they really knew. You know, I really was, I didn't know, I, I, there's just not, nothing to me. But yet God is doing something through me and through us. And so, and so it's, a, it's an exciting thing. You desire, I can see how God has blessed me. And, I, and it's good to pray for God's blessing upon you so you can walk in the favor that he's called you to walk. Every one of you have a, have a plan and a purpose. And he has great futures for you. But you can't do it without him. You can't do it without him. It, you want to do it with him, amen? amen. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to Genesis 12-2. Uh, 12-2. Uh, Genesis 12-2. Uh, he says, I will bless you. And then here's why he wants to bless you. I will bless you to be a blessing to others. Amen. I can easily look out on all of you. I know every single person in this room. Yes, sir. I know every single person in this room, and I can tell you, not only you're blessed to me, you're blessed to other people around you. Because I know your person, enough of your personal lives, most of you, I know you make a difference where you are. And so, where you're a blessing, so you can be a blessing to others. But uh, God needs you to have more, not so that you can keep more. God needs you to have more gifts, so you can bless others more. Yeah. That, that's God's plan. He does. His plan is always to use people. And so don't, don't have this mentality, oh, woe is me, I should just, you know, I'm worthy, I'm not worthy because I didn't do this, and I'm not, but, you know, don't have that. Just like, Lord, if you trust me with it, I'm going to share whatever it is, whether it's finances, whether it's health, whether it's extra food, whether it's an extra smile, whatever it is, Lord, everything you bless me with, Lord, I just want to share it with others. You want to be like a faucet, okay? Not a faucet that's turned off, but a faucet that's on. So that the Lord just, his blessings just, you just want to run through you. There's nothing better when you realize all these things happen that has nothing to do with you, but just the fact that you are able, God was able to flow through you. That's the kind of blessing that we're talking about. Amen. And then just, let me just talk for a second on finances, because it's all because of you. In all honesty, those of you that have been with me for a long time, maybe in the early years, but in the last five, six years, have you ever heard of for money? There's just, it's like, because we're, we, our church understand the, understands the biblical, biblical principle. And so the money flows in. We have some money in savings, but it doesn't stay there. It just keeps flowing out. It just keeps going out. And so I found the more, the more that flows out, the more God just pours in. And what's really cool is, see, I don't ever have to ask you for money. I just ask the Lord. Yeah. Lord, you know, we're going to need, because what, what God does, God gives us vision. And I just tell you right now, our vision right now is so large, if I told you, you'd probably be freaked out and just leave because it's just too much to handle, all right? 
You thought, oh, you could never use this little place like that. No, it, it's big. God is, I just promise you, in fact, I, with all authority on the word of God, I can promise you that there's about to be some real breakthrough. Yeah. Not only in our church, but in the body of Christ, all right? And God said, I want you to be a part of it. He wants connection with the church to be a part of it. And so the more, as I pray, I just pray for you all, Lord, just put it on their hearts, Lord. You know, make them faithful to you. Make them faithful to, as you bless them, Lord. Bless their finances. Bless their jobs. Just be conduits, Lord, of giving. We're, you know, there'll be a day. I mean, it's, it's okay that, uh, that uh, Hope 360 is doing a fundraiser. But I wish they didn't have to do a fundraiser. The churches should just be supporting them. Yeah. I mean, they sh we should just be like, it should just, there should just be abundance flowing through us. Uh, Northwest Bible Training Center, it is a fundraiser for them to do the banquet, but it shouldn't be any pressure of money on them. It should just be, we should just be filling every need that they have. All these ministries, I mean, I, I don't like it. It just doesn't seem right to me. When you look in Scripture, you know, the Bible says that God's principle is to take blessings to the people and pour them out into their yeah. ministries. Yeah. And so, Lord, we just, so I just keep praying for you guys. You have no idea how much missing that I pray for you guys. Thank you me. have no idea. Thank you. Because, because otherwise, we would just be stressed out. It'd be like, oh, Lord, how can you do all this? And I was like, I'm not worry about it, God. You're going to use all these people. All right? <laughs> You'll bring every need. And so we just said, okay, Lord, so every time we get new vision... We, it's kind of scary because we think, oh, that this person's going to have that set to change where I did it. And it's like, okay, Lord, it's your plan. And so we just follow. Yeah. Again, that's, that's the blessing. That's, that's what's so exciting. But to stay on that line, um, we're blessed. But now what we need is what Jabez did. We need to, we've got the blessing. We know the Lord's hand is upon us. I know he's on me. He know he's on you. But the next thing is says, okay, now that your, your hand is upon me, the next line is found in the second part of 4, 410. It says this, expand my territory. Because if I have more, if you're faithful with a little, okay, you'll be faithful with a lot. Hallelujah. If you're faithful what God has given you, you will be faithful with a lot. And so if I have more, you're not going to hoard it. What are you going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to do more. We're going to do more. So our, our second point there is to expand our prayer territory is to pray for influence. Did you guys know that's why today's step three is so important about leadership? It's all about influence. Every single one of us were influencers in our job, in our community, in our homes, in our families, in our church, uh, at the grocery store. People are watching you, and you're influencing people. Lord, stretch me. God, just stretch me. Stretch me more. Stretch me where I know it has nothing to do with me. It's all about you. Amen. Amen. Take me places, Lord, that are bigger than me. Take me places that are bigger than the vision you've given me. Keep me stirred up and keep me going. So many of us, and myself at times, we feel unchallenged or stuck or like, oh, Lord, I just keep doing the same thing over and over. Expand your vision. Let the Lord enlarge your territory. Lord, give me a bigger picture so I'm not just focused on my issues and my problems or, or my kids' problems or my parents' problems or my neighbors' problems. Lord, Lord, give me a vision for what you want to do. It'll shake you up. Okay? Life comes joyfully when you, I like this, when you lean in to the Lord. You ever do that when you pray? Can I encourage you to do that now? You have your prayer time. Maybe it's with your spouse. Maybe it's on your own. Maybe it's with another person. But would you take some times and just you stop and physically lean in? There's something about, I can tell you when I watch you guys, there's times you guys lean into me. Like, I'll, there'll be something I'll say, this is something I'll know. It's like, this is something that's going to mean something to people. And you'll see people kind of pause, and you'll see them move forward just a little. There's, there's just something about leaning in. And it's like, you're focusing, you're laser sharp. This is, this is what I'm supposed to do. This, and so when you lean into God, it's at those moments that I believe He shows you your territory. He expands you. It's like, it's like all my focus is on you, Jesus. You lean in. That's just that was just came up. I know. Um, <laughs> some of you, your life's not exciting. I can tell you why. It's all about you. You're boring. All right. You're just you. That's why. <laughs> it's, that's the answer. And so, but when you lean in, and you see God's got vision for you that involves extraction and doing and. All of a sudden, if that's the thing with God, is all of a sudden your problems and issues are just not that big a deal in the context of things. It's like, Lord, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Mm, it's good stuff. All right. Ephesians 1.18. The 
This is good. This is how the Living Bible, I got it out of here just because it says it so well. Because I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can see something in the future. He has called you to do something. Share. You know it's of God is if he shows you something and you realize it's just not about you, but it's about touching people's lives. Because what does, what does God care about most? People. Love God. Love Lord God with your heart, soul, mind. Love people as yourself. God, no. I mean, he cares about your paycheck and you pray for your finances because it's important, but he cares more about the people you're going to touch with finances than your actual finances. He cares, and he, does he care about your health? Yes, but he wants you healthy so you can minister, not so you can just be healthy and sit at home. All right? Some of you have given me stories of some miracles that have happened in your life, health issues. It's for a reason. You know, it's like, yeah, he's he not done with you. It's like, he's just, he's just, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, Lord, because other people would, my doctor said I should have died, but, you know, here I still am. Yes, well, that's, that's, that's amazing. That is a miracle. That is, that is the Lord. That is, he's expanding your territory. That's an exciting thing. God has an inheritance for us. An inheritance. And our inheritance, I mean, I love earthly inheritances because I love, I want to pass stuff onto my kids. I love how my mom and dad pass stuff onto me. Financial blessings and things, those are all important. But God has an inheritance for each and every one of you. He has an inheritance for us, to, for others that is beyond just stuff. Just stuff. Psalms 2.8 says this. He says this, only ask. And I'll give you more stuff. No. <laughs> only ask. <laughs> I will give you nations. <laughs> nations are not borders. Nations represent people. All right? Ask. I will give you the nations as your inheritance. The whole earth as your possession. The whole earth as your possession. That's really what it's all about. That's, who, that's our inheritance. That's who we take with us. Our people. You and I are designed to be influencers of people. Amen? Yeah, amen? The whole idea is to take as many to heaven as you can. Take as many alongside with you. All right? Take them to heaven. All right? Plunder hell and be a part of populating heaven. Yeah. All right? Because once we leave here, you know, all this stuff, it don't matter what's down here. What matters is the people that are up there. Can you imagine the stories we're going to tell each other? Can you imagine, can you imagine how heartwarming it's going to be when someone says, remember when you gave me that cold cup of water. Remember when you gave me that when I was in need. Remember when you told me about Jesus. Or, you know what? I watched you grow and I saw you reflect Jesus and it made me want to be a Christian. You know, it's just, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, right? When you ask God to bless you, you're actually asking him to help you be a better influencer. Because the truth of the matter is, you and I, we're in over our head. Yeah. We're we're in way over our head. You know, the whole weight of the gospel is on us. That's way over our head. And he did that on purpose. So we have to lean into him yeah. Yeah. and follow his plan. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I hope you I hope at times you feel overwhelmed. I hope at times you feel almost crushed. You say, Lord, I, I hope you have to cry out. I mean it sounds mean, but it's not. It's like, Lord, I cry out to you, Lord, because I just can't. I can't do your plan without you, you know, because it's so right for it. Just, okay, then let's go. Finally, you're going to stop doing it on your own. Let's go. You know, it's a good thing, all right? That's exactly where you want to be where you can cry out. And that's where we lead into here is 1 Chronicles 4.10, continuing here, second part of the third part of the scripture. It says this, Jabez says, please be with me. Please be with me. Lord, I can't do this without you. I need you. Third fill in is simply that pray for presence. We want His presence in everything we do, in everything you do. His presence is what counts. Amen. Lord, what you ask me to do is it's bigger than me. Lord, what you ask me to even show me what I might be doing, it's bigger than me. I can't do this without you. That's a wonderful spot to be in. That causes you to, to really call on Him and really call. And then when things do happen, you're able to say, oh, Thank you, Lord, it wasn't dependent on me. Look what you did, Lord. And all the lives have been touched. Acts 2, Acts 11 and 21 says this. The power of the Lord was with them. And a large number of these Gentiles believed and turned to the Lord. There were big plans in Acts. The church grew daily. 
right? 3,000 in one day got saved. Oh, yeah. Not because, I mean, there's people's obedience, but not because any people were special, but because God was special. Yeah. Because yeah. God is going to do what he's going to do. Whatever his word says he's going to do, he's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right? That's what he's going to do. Your power is not enough to accomplish what he has for us. Yeah, you and I, we serve a great God. Amen? Amen. Mark 10, 18, 10, 18, it's not in your notes. As I was studying this, um, when we were young believers, uh, our kids were really little. So uh, Michael was, oh, I don't know, four or five, and Bethany was two or three, somewhere in that. I get the ages all mixed up. But I will never forget this. I don't know if Michael remembers it. I remember his first memory verse at school. At, uh, where did he go? West Hills Christian School. He was in kindergarten. And uh, it, again, this was new to me. I, like, I grew up religiously. I didn't grow up where you really absorbed the word of God. I didn't know what that was. And I remember his teacher, she was an older lady, and, and uh, I believe, yes, if I'm picturing her right. And there's a scripture, and I didn't understand it until like I do now. But I remember this is the first one he had to learn. This, again, this is a new experience. All the kids have to learn memory verses every week. This was a new experience. Mark 10, 18. There is none good but one. That is God. Have that, that scripture, and I don't know what, and I'm not a good scripture memorizer. I forget scriptures and their references all the time, but that scripture, it sunk into me. There is none good but one. That is God. That's right. It just, Amen. again, and it's not putting any of us down. It's just saying God's goodness is just, it's just, it's, so, we just, it's like, I just want to reflect his good and his glory. I can't do enough good. I can't, no matter how good I try to be, it's not even near what God is and what it can be. Right. And here a little kindergartner had memorized that, and his dad, all these years, that's been in the back of my mind. That was 30 years ago. 30 years ago. <laughs> you know, there, there's not good for what that is God. Right. Again, it just, it, it, his, it's, it's his goodness. It's his presence. It's his ability. Um, I never saw myself do anything like this. I never saw, that was before I was ministering to children. That was before I was in the ministry. I never had seen it. Until then, when I realized, oh, God, you're good. You, you, can, you can do all things. I just want to get into your plan. So I, I'm over my head. I'll just let y'all know I'm way over my head. Cindy, Cindy and I, we're way over our head. We, 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 live, we, we love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind, and we have visions and plans, but it's a day to day thing. The devil every day tries to take us out, and we know we have to fight. Fight, fight. And some of you are fighting alongside us, and I see it, and I sense it, and I feel it. Keep fight, fight, fight. All right? All right. Um, one last thing, one last thing. A little bit of time. Um, just how I apply his presence in my. Let me just take off my pastor hot hat. A lot of you know I also work there as a community center. Put that hat on. Bus driver. All right. And again, I just think the Lord's hilarious because this is humorous to me. You might not find it funny, but I think it's absolutely hilarious. Um, uh, I've told you the story, but for some of you, if you've not heard it before, just laugh anyway. Just <laughs> heard it right now. Um, but if anybody has seen me around town, not on the bus, but in a car, do you ever see me driving? I mean, you may, but it's like, I hate to drive. I mean, just like, it's like on my, my list of things that I enjoy doing, it's like number 6,839. I mean, I just don't, I just, I don't enjoy it. I just don't, I don't like, I don't like being aggressive with other drivers. I don't like, I don't like, you know, don't follow the rules in their own road. I don't like to have to pant their time. I just, I just don't, I just, I just, I just don't like driving. So what does the Lord open the door for me to do? I drive people three days a week, and like like Elder says, he drives me crazy. That's what he does when he's on. And and it really does literally drive me crazy. I don't know how. If you knew me before I was on this road, the re I used to tell Cindy this all the time. I don't know if I told other people. It's like I never wanted to backtrack. So it's like, can we go a different way when we come back? And so so I drive these people around crazy out there because it's like I get so tired of going up and down the wall, up and down the lane, up and down. I don't like to backtrack. I mean, just like. But you know what I like is I love the people. Amen. And so it's like, and so in my 
Oh, okay, it's not about what I'm doing. It's about the people that I'm doing it for. Yeah. If you can capture that, if you can capture that, not only in your jobs, but in any area of ministry that you're yes. doing, all right? Whether you're making coffee or serving in the nursery or helping with the children or set up or tear down, it's not about the actual project, but it's about the people that are going to get blessed by you. Yes. Yeah. See, that's the whole key to ministry. Yep. It's just, I'm just bonus of, oh, i got to do this, I that, that. Yeah, you do. And there's some mornings I don't want to get. There's some mornings I don't want to drive to start that bus. I mean, I just don't want to because I know I've got to get back on the bus and, and i got to like look for other drivers. And, but I think about, okay, I'm going to see Albert today. Okay, I'm going to see. I know the people I'm going to see. I've got my manifest. I know this person's probably going to call and they're probably going to need me. And, you know, i got one guy that's, you know, he's in his last days of cancer. And I'm sometimes his only ride. His only ride. Mm. And, and you're just like, and he opens up to me and you're just like, it's just... It's about the people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's like, you just say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I just do something. I mean, we just spent a whole class on, on discovering your purpose. Just once you get started doing something, you realize it's not about the actual task. Yeah, you're gifted. That's good. You do the things you're gifted. But it's about the people. Yeah. It just changes. When I get up in the morning on Sunday morning, I don't think about, I don't think about my message. I go through it one time before, but it's like, I think about all you. I think about you guys walking in the door. I think about the green team setting up. I think about a time we're going to get together and pray for each other. I think about worship. I think about ministry changing people's lives. I think about prayer going on. But it's all about the people that it's going to affect. When I, and you know this. When I write your sermons, when I write my sermons, I, I actually picture you. I mean, I actually, I'll see points. Oh, this is going to minister to them. So if I'm staring at you, it probably is for a reason. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way, that's just the way, that's how God formed me. That's how, that's what motivates me, you know, to lock myself up from about 8 to 1 every Monday, and that's, and I just focus in on the next, because I can't wait, I can't wait till later in the week. I have to do it right away, because the Lord has you guys on my mind. So it's like, i got to do this ahead of time, and get it going. Thank you, Jesus. Moses says, Moses says it like this, in Exodus 33, verse 15, he says this. Then Moses said to all these Israelites, you know, he's just, Moses, you know, he's not the best speaker, he's just like, Lord, you're choosing me. He says, if your presence, capital P, presence, the presence of God, and of course, then we know, because we talked about last week about the tabernacle prayer, the presence uh, in the daytime was a pillar, was a cloud, and the nighttime was a pillar of fire. So, so his actual presence, would be, but if your presence does not go with us, don't send us up from here, keep going with how will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish, what will distinguish me? What will distinguish you from anybody else who's handing out food or, or, or uh, helping your neighbor or, which are those are all good things to do. But if you do with eternal mindedness, not that you're going to say you've got to know Jesus or burn, but if you did that too, but that you're doing out of love for Jesus, you want people to see Jesus in you. His presence, what else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people? There's good people on the earth. Well, there's none good but one, that is God. But there are people who think they are good. You ever get that in conversation with people? Well, he's such a good person. I'm sure they'll be in heaven. Well, I know that's not in the Bible. I mean, it's just, it, there's nothing good. It's Jesus. It's the goodness of Jesus. All right? Next line. I think there's one more. Or is that it? Yeah. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do everything you have asked because I am pleased with you. Lord, bless us with more than our need. Enlarge our territory, Lord. Um, may your presence be with us every step of the way. And you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. If you've been around the block at all, if you've been a believer for any length of time at all, you know the moment you lean into God and he gets a vision. It's like, Lord, I'm ready. I'm going to go forward. Something's going to happen to you. First Chronicles 4.10 says this. Jabez knew this, and Lord, keep me out of trouble. Trouble's going to come. The minute you're thought, the minute, well, you think, oh, Lord, I got your blessing. I can just walk like Teflon. Nope, nope. Yeah, you need like Teflon that falls off of you, but it, you're going to still get hit, all right? When you're now a target. The minute you decide, I'm going all out for you, God. I see you have a vision for my life, and it's to touch these people, and it's going to, it's, your finances are going to be attacked. Your health's going to be attacked. Someone's not going to like you no more. I mean, it's just amazing 
what the devil does to try and bring trouble on your life. Yeah. So why, why not be bold about it? Say, Lord, I, I know I have time. <laughs> it says in the Word, Jesus even tells us trouble's going to come. Lord, I, I need your help. I need your protection. So number four, this is so important, part of your prayer life. Pray for protection. Pray for protection. Jabez prayed it. You and I need to pray it. I tell you, we are in Satan's sights. Yeah, that's right. He is watching you. Uh, Terrence and I had this discussion earlier today. You know you're doing something good. Or, there's many good, but one but God. But you know you're doing something in line with his plan. When like all hell seems to break out, it's like oh, it seems like everything's falling apart, and this person's mad, and that person's leaving, and they're all mad at me, and I, this didn't happen, and you know you, you're doing something right. Yeah. And so instead, what if you can turn that around and be excited about it? Oh Lord, <laughs> it looks dim, but I'm so thankful that I'm part of your plan. You know, it looks scary, but Lord, you're you're, you're bigger than all this. Right. And for the maybe for the first time in your life. You're a real threat to the devil. You've probably been kind of, you may have been lulled to like, well, if I just kind of get through life, then maybe one day I'll get to heaven. But if all of a sudden you're standing up making a difference for Christ, all of a sudden, you know, a lot of you get ready. We've got hunting, hunting season starting real soon. And, uh, and, and so all of a sudden you're, you're, you're in sight of the enemy. And not only is the devil alone, he's got all these devils around and just watching over you, trying to keep track of you. Blessing, influence, presence. And protection. You can pray that fast, that can be something, or you can ex expand out on each one. This is what I know. And I'll just kind of sum it up about the devil, because I, I don't want to put any fear in anybody. I know this. The devil does have some power. He does. Don't fool yourself. Well, I'm just a believer now, and so I'm just, you know, I've got the authority to see. Yes, you can keep. He does have some power. What the devil doesn't have is any authority. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He doesn't have any authority to exercise. He will try and trick you. He will try and deceive you to make you think he does. But the truth of the matter is, according to the word, he, he has none of that. The small amount he has, and I'll tell you exactly because it's in the word of God. I don't think it's in your notes, but I'll give you two scriptures. Um, there's only one small amount of power that the devil has. And it's found in John 8, 44. It says, he is a liar yeah. and the father of lies. Yeah. That's the only thing he has to hang on to. Yeah. That's the only thing, that's the only power that he's been, whatever, still allowed to use, is he can still lie. And I think that the Lord just allows that so that we can have a chance to like stand up under the authority of Jesus to teach us something. Amen. Because he, he can't actually, he doesn't have any authority to exercise those lies, but he has the power to, well, you have the power to be gullible and believe it. He is, he is the father of lies. You don't have to believe anything that he says. And, and some of us, and again, this is kind of theology, but, but you don't have to break the power of the devil. The, 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 and I'll give you another scripture here. You don't have to, oh, I've got to work myself up to you know, come against the power of the devil. No, Jesus did all that. He did all that. He is no threat. It's just A lie is just a lie. It's up to you whether you suck it in or not. You know what I mean? If you hear a lie or, some, or someone else tells you a lie, or it's, you, it's up to you to receive that, all right? That's the, only, that's the only power he can have. If he can feel, make you feel defeated, if he, can, if he can make you feel lonely or tired or, or just, uh, or just it's just so hard. If he can do that, then he gets you to grab onto it. But you don't have to muster yourself up to defeat him. The Bible says very clearly, write this down, write down Romans 16, 20. It says, God will soon crush Satan under your feet. Yeah. See, some of us think we've got to crush Satan. We're the ones who are supposed to do it. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, God will do it. Right. Right? So don't, don't, you don't, you don't get him the time of day. No. It's like, Jesus, all authority is through you, Christ. I don't have, yeah. The devil's trying to throw these lies at me, but I don't receive them in Jesus' name. Right. And that's it. Yeah. That, that's it. Yeah. All right? And God promises he will crush the devil. Right. So write those two scriptures down. John 8, 44, Romans 16, 20. They're important scriptures. God will do what he says he will do. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. Sometimes I have to give too much attention to the enemy and what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Just you know, it's like, you got, no, you got no authority to do that. You can say all you want. You can make me think what you want. Yeah. But God says he's going to crush you. 
In the story. Lord, what are we going to do today? I mean, that's what's, that's, you just, it really takes that kind of a mindset. And Romans 12, too, it's renewing your mind. It's changing your mindset. Because that's where the enemy works. He wants to get in your mind, get you worry, stress, fret, all that kind of stuff, all right? We need this because the truth is found in 1 Peter 5. Eight. Stay alert. It's just, God's just telling us, stay alert, all right? Watch out for that great enemy who has that little bit of power but no authority. The devil. He prowls around, look like a roaring lion, looking, okay? Prowls around like, he isn't a lion. He doesn't have the strength or authority, but he, he, gives a, he tries to trick you into thinking he is a lion, all right? Prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. He can't do it, amen? Our job is to stay alert. God's job is to protect us. Just be alert. You know, be alert. That should be a hashtag, be alert. I don't know. Job is to stay alert. God's job is to protect us. Devil, you get your hand off my marriage. Devil, you get off my job. Devil, you get off my hand, my uh, my uh, finances. I don't believe anything you're saying, devil. I know it looks this way, but I serve a God who's given me a vision, who's given me a plan, who says there's no one good but Him. He's the one I trust. Amen. All right, Romans eight thirty-five and thirty-seven. Last couple of verses says this: Can anything ever separate us? Anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Let me answer that right now. Nope. Does it mean when no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? No, because we just learn. It's going to come. Trouble's going to happen, right? Um, or, or persecuted, or hungry, or destitute, or in danger, or threatened with death. No. None of those things. The next verse, verse 37, despite all these things, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. Amen? So last fill in there is prayer about us moving towards God. Don't worry about the world coming on you. Don't worry about things sometimes. Just keep leaning in. Just begin. Use that picture of me. Just picture Pastor Jerry up front. Just lean in. All right? Just, uh, just lean into God. Amen? Go ahead and close your notes. Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity just to share your word about the prayer of Jabez. Father, just I speak over all of us, Lord, that we are not religious, Lord, but we're in relationship with you. And we thank you for these models that are given to us of godly people who, who followed plans, Lord, to, uh, to, to, in prayer. And so, Father, you've taught us today that, that, that Jabez, he was bold enough to not let anything hold him back and ask for your blessings so that he could be an influencer. Father, I pray that over all of us here today. Lord, we ask for your blessings corporately and individually so that we can be influencers in our homes, in our jobs, in our families, in our church around the world, Father. The Lord, we're not going to do this just as Jabez says, we need you without your presence. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that your presence is not only with us now, but it's with us as we go today. It's with us in our workplace. It's with us in our home. And finally, Lord, thank you, Lord, for just sealing it up with us that we don't have to fear the devil. Lord, he has, he has no authority, but his power is really powerless because of Jesus. Father, show us that, just as you said, we're going to watch for it. Let us be aware. Give us a supernatural ability to understand, hey, those are tricks of the enemy, not the truth of God. Help it be like a, almost like a, a lightning bolt. And it's like, hey, that's not, the, that's not you, God. That's the enemy. And let it just become real to us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we go, one last thing I'd like to do is I just want to take one last opportunity to pray. There may be some here today that have said, you know, you talk about this Jesus business, but... I've never really invited him into my life. You know, it's really cool. Many of us here have, and all it is, it's just the Bible's real clear that what we're supposed to do is, is invite him to be part of your life, ask for forgiveness of what you've done that's wrong, and just make a change in your life. Yeah. And it says, it says in the Bible that we should believe in our heart that Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. And he's given you a new life. And it promises if you've done this, then all of a sudden you're on a, you're on a new trajectory towards heaven. Right? That God wants to spend eternity with you through His Son Jesus. So go ahead and bow your heads for just a moment. We want a private moment. Anybody that like, we're going to pray. If there's anybody in this room today that you would say, you know, uh, I really want to invite Jesus into my life today, and I don't want to stand up or anything do like that, but I want to publicly say, even with eyes closed, that Jesus is my Lord. If there's anybody here today that would just kind of like to raise your hand, be in agreement with this, that Jesus is your Lord today. Let's pray this prayer together. 
Father, we declare that Jesus, you are Lord. We believe in our heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And because of that, we are made right with God and saved. We repent of all the wrong things we've done and say from this day forward, we're following you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand together. We're going we're gonna to go out today. Uh, there's going to be a thing at, after I dismiss you. There will be ushers in the back. If you have a prayer request, uh, write that on there. If you made any decision for Christ, put that on the card. If you have an offering for us, they will collect that. We're going to have prayer partners walking up to front. There will be some on this side of me. There will be some on that side of me. Please do this for me. Hey, I need your attention. Hey, no talking. Need your attention. This is, a, this is what, like the most crucial moment, all right? There are people here today that need prayer. This is why we're here, all right? There are people here that you need to lean into, that need to lean into God. If there's any sort of prayer need today, please be bold. Just step out of your seats. We'll sing a worship song together. Let them pray for you. Take some time for that, and then I'll, I'll come back and close in just a minute. So let's worship. We've got one last song. I'm going to make that mic work. One last song. Let's just worship together. Go ahead and walk up and get prayer. Oh, thank you, Lord. Jesus, we worship you. Just lift your hands where you are and just worship him a little bit. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. example, Lord, for us to follow. Lord, we need your blessing. So I speak blessing over every person in this room, Father God. Lord, we receive it in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you to enlarge our territory, Lord, that we would be able to touch more lives in heaven just for you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that your presence when we go today, it stays with us. Holy Spirit, you dwell within us and never leave us nor forsake us. And finally, Father, we just give you great glory for protecting us, Father. We rest in that, Lord. We're not worried about the enemy, Lord. Rather, we understand his schemes and instead we just look forward to following your vision for our life in Jesus' name. 
Amen. God bless you guys. Have a really good week. Uh, we'll have about 10 minutes to hang out. Get some more coffee if you can. And um, noon in the uh, fireside room if you want to do step three. And don't forget to sign up for a small group and be a part. Amen. God bless. Thank you.